Lucy gave us of Catherine Hairston. Catherine, who touched many lives on her journey. She had a wonderful journey. Let's start with work. She worked with so many employees at Perry Point. I don't know if she worked in Baltimore or not. I think her career was always in the school system. Okay. Well, at, at Perry Point, she worked many places, many units. She ended up her career as a unit manager. And that was a great gift to a lot of people. They felt assured with that. She also cared for many patients. And that is, uh, you have to have a gift from God to be able to do that. But let's not forget her family that she loved, her close ones that she loved. And you know, she touched all of us deeply. That's the thing to remember. When I was at work, I was at work shortly after she passed away. And one of the employees came up to me and he says, have you heard anything about Catherine Harrison? And I said, no. And I got that, that feeling, that sense of dread. You know, I, I said, oh no, no. So, uh, but I had to know. So I texted Catherine's phone number, her, her cell phone. And you know, when Deidre texted me back, I got the worst news that her mother had passed. And my heart broke. You know, and I was sad. It crushed me. And I think so many of us at work were filled with an emptiness. People at work started talking. Why did God take her so young? You know, she hadn't been retired long. But you know, Satan wants us to question that. He wants us to question God. He wants us not to trust God to provide for us and to care for us. That's his trickery. So I had to refocus. And I had to think of the last time I saw Catherine, earlier this year, just before Easter. We were meeting because she was picking up Easter eggs that my church, the youth of my church had made for Easter, for a fundraiser. And you know, Catherine enjoyed life. She was there to pick up 10 coconut Easter eggs and two peanut butter Easter eggs. <laughs> and I knew before I was gone that day, I knew she'd be going home and eating at least one of them. Damn it, at least one of them. And we're not talking about Mary Sue Easter eggs. We're talking about like the half a pounders, you know. Because, what did I say? Catherine enjoyed life. She lived it to the fullest. So my pain was eased when I had that memory. I was telling Megan, you know, at work, I said, you know, I can remember her face and how nice and beautiful she looked in March. But then I remembered something else that made me feel even better. She's in God's hands right now. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying? Did you hear me? She's with Jesus right now. And that gave me great comfort. And I knew it comforted her to know she was going there, but it just comforted me to know that she is with God. And Catherine had been my unit manager. And one of the great things about our relationship, you know, I could go up to Catherine and I could talk about my faith at work. You know, it wasn't like a no-no topic. And Catherine would ask me, she said, when's the next time you're going to do a sermon? I want to come and see you. And she did. She came in my church. And she sat there and she listened. And then afterwards she critiqued it. She told me, she told me what she liked. She told me what she got from it. You know. And of course, you know, I'm okay with that. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit was with us. And everyone who goes and listens at church, they get what they need to get. 
So I looked through some of my old sermons, and I picked out a verse that I wanted to share with everyone. It's from Psalm 16, verses 9 through 11. And actually, the topic of my sermon that day was 911, you know, sir, verses 9 through 11. And how wonderful, how beautiful life is. Because Catherine was a nurse. Catherine handled many emergencies. I said, how perfect. 911. But you know, the thing about this verse, these verses, David wrote these verses, and he said he knew the underlying, underlying meaning was about joy. You know, joy is different than happiness. You can go out to the beach and have happiness. But when you find joy from God, you have permanent joy. And David knew that the only way to have real joy was to have God walk with you through your daily life. And Catherine knew this. She was content and she had peace. And because she walked with God daily. So let me read this verse for you. I took it from the message version. Because I knew you would appreciate this. I'm happy from the inside out. And from the outside in. I'm firmly formed. You canceled my ticket to hell. That's not my destination. Now, you've got my feet on the life path, all radiant from the shining of your face. Ever since you took my hand, I'm on the right way. Amen? Amen. Right? We know who's holding our hand here. Now, I told you, when I got out of that bathroom, I was sad. I had an emptiness. I was hurting, but I knew if I was hurting and I was sad, I knew her family was taking it a lot harder. I knew Deidre, especially, was having trouble. It was a hard struggle for her. So what I want to do now, I want to finish this with a prayer to lift up her family and friends. Lift them up on their journey to be strong and carry on. Please join me in prayer. Father, we come to you to rejoice today. We rejoice in your love for us. And especially the comfort that you brought us through Catherine, through her life, how she touched all of us. We cherish our memories. And we ask that right now, you lift up, you put your hands on her family and her friends. Put your love on them. Put your care on them. Let them know that you're walking with them. Strengthen them. Comfort them. Let them see our witness in faith today and be strong with that. In your great name, Father. Amen. Amen. We're going to carry on. We're going to listen to some scripture from the Old Testament. Psalm 23, the Amplified Version. Kevin? Somewhere around here. You going to come up here? If I don't have to, I think I gotta. Okay, you got that new point. For your reading pleasure, I'll be reading from the Old Testament, Psalm 23, the Amplified Version, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, to feed, to guide, to shield me. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. <laughs> He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul life. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You ride to protect, you staff to guide. They comfort and console me. You prepare to open before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointing and refreshing my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness 
and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house of the Lord. Amen. Now we're going to hear from the New Testament, Glory Revivo, Revelation 21, 1 through 5. Hello, I'm Lori Redivo. I'm Catherine's oldest niece, oldest living niece. <laughs> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the whole city, holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with him and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. Yes. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost Ooh. from the spring of the water of life. Ooh. May a blessing be added to the reading and the hearing of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. James Hope has a selection of songs for Catherine. You know, she's watching. Okay? <laughs> She, she's looking down on us. As I do these, what Catherine left on the record, <laughs> she's giving us a message. <laughs> Sing along with me. 
she had illnesses, even though she had health problems. She said to me in March, her breathing problem, she was on oxygen. But that was okay, it wasn't holding her back. She was going on and she was enjoying life. Okay, now we're going to have a reading from Kayla Jackson. Let's go. 
wise world should look into your moan and mock you with me after I am done. I believe. Oh. 
thought of it and not think about things that we do, but when we're unable to do those things, it leaves us lost and confused and a void that we're not real sure how to handle. I know in time that this pain may ease, but I know it will not go away. There has been a void left in my life that I know no one else will ever, ever, ever be able to fill. But I know she's no longer hurting. She might have told everybody she was fine, she was doing okay. But there were days I just know that she was hurting more than she would ever let anyone know. And I'm grateful that I got to be with her that last day. Those of you that didn't know, Mom and I had gone on a short vacation, which turned out to be a long three-week vacation from her. But that's okay. We got to see family. She got to be with people she loved. And I got to be with her on her final breath. And I'm so grateful that I was there. I just thank you all for everything that you've done for this time. And I know that you all will be there in my years and days to come. And I thank you and I love you.
for our presence today. To be here. I'm talking because I'm looking for scriptures that I should have had before I stood up here. But I didn't because it just dropped in my spirit that I wanted to read it. And because I'm getting at the age that I am, I dare not quote it. <coughs> but Deva gives me the inspiration to read it. Because of a love for her mom, and the strength that God has given you. He gives strength to those who grow tired and increases the strength of those who are weak. Even young people grow tired and become weary and young men will stumble and fall. Yet the strength of those who wait with hope in the Lord will be renewed. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and won't become weary. They will walk and won't get tired. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall walk. That's what I wanted to read. And we see your strength because of your love for your mother. Your mom was an exceptional lady. And I heard Reverend say earlier about her critique of a message. Well, she critiqued everybody. You don't have to be preaching. All you got to be walking and critique. But what a beautiful lady uh, Kathy is. And uh, it is a, was a privilege. It's a privilege to know her. And the first time I met her, there was something about her eyes. And I never, still don't know exactly what it is, but her eyes kept her beating. And I'll talk a little bit more about it later. But first, I'm going to do what I've been asked to do. And that's a tribute, a tribute. I have the privilege. My name is Willie Savage. I had the privilege, the joy, to pastor First Baptist Church of Cheswell for 20 years. The privilege and the joy to be where Deacon and Deaconess, Laura, James and Laura Hope uh, accepted me as well as the congregation to pass their church. And Kathy, she, was she ever there? Yeah, sure. She was a member there, but critiqued me every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and every Wednesday, and every Thursday. But she did it with love and with spirit. And thank God for that. And now I passed her. Uh, Shepherd's Community Christian Church in Middletown. This tribute is to my sister from my dear friends. We were kindred spirits, and God said, Let there be heaven. Let her dwell on earth from September 1, 1957 until June 8th, July 8th, 2018. Who critiqued me? <laughs> <laughs> she yet lives. <laughs> Let her love and be loved by family and friends. Let her make a difference in the world on her way home. Let her share with others words to live by 
Let her speak freely, never doubting my word. Even when she suffers, may she continue to encourage others to seek me. Let her tarry that at my given hour, may she return to live, to heaven, to live through eternity. I know when she leaves the earth, there will be a boat, but that will only serve to draw them closer. Always follow your dream and believe in yourself. For someone as special as you have the ability to create a world of wonderful tomorrow. Loving system. Plan of the master leader. Remember you are free. No longer back. No earthly chains only you. You are free. Catherine is free. And in addition, breathe in me deep that I might breathe and live. And hold me close that I might sleep soft held by all you do. Come kiss me, wind, and take my breath away until you and I are one and we will dance <coughs> among the two until all death is done. And no one knows that we exist wrapped in each other's arms until the one who blew the breath hides me safe from home. Come kiss me, wind, and take my breath away until you and I are one. And we will dance among the two until all death is the eye is the lamp of the body. So if the eye is unclouded, the whole body will be full of light. Catherine's eyes sparkle with joy of the expectation of the light of each day and the hope of a glorious eternity. In Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Whereas Kathy B. Harrison, Harrison knew. Phyllis, where are you? That's the sin of your family. Stand up, Phyllis. He can hope. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones, to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Be it forever resolved that Jesus, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible.
We thank you for these, your people. We thank you for the food that has been prepared for us. We thank you as we come to your table to dine once again for all the provisions that you have provided for us. As we come to fellowship one with another, let us, O oh God, come with glad hearts. And as we talk among ourselves, be one in our midst that you might be the center of our conversation and the center of our joy. Thank you for everything you do for us. Keep us by your grace. We thank you, O oh God, for who we are and where we find ourselves. Somebody does not have as much as we have today, O oh God, and we ask that you're merciful and kind unto them as you have always been. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.